Well, hello, Darkfish Rally friends, and my goodness me, it's Rally Kenya, the Safari Rally, probably the most anticipated rally of the year, with our resident safari expert, almost, uh, George, at one point, you were almost uh, living out here in Kenya. It's your favourite rally of the year, isn't it? Colin, categorically my favourite event. Yes, I used to spend six months a year down here organising the massive event that safari is. Uh, this event is still my favourite, even in its changed conditions. It's just amazing. It's still got all the flavour, all the character, all the challenges. Wow. We're above the town in Ivasha. It's down towards the lake, which is in the distance. What a beautiful setting for a service park. George, giraffes, warthogs. What else? Zebras around here, all sorts. Zebras, um, Dick Dick, that's very, very small deer. They're absolutely beautiful. There are Impala, there are Thompson's Gazelle. All around the there service park. Eland. Oh, in the service park? Yeah. Crocodiles. <laughs> Hippopotamus, <laughs> there's loads out there, I tell you. Fantastic. But folks, George mentioned it, you know, the, the safari of old, always the biggest challenge. Yeah. Some people would have said potentially the biggest challenge in motorsport, never mind just in rallying. Yeah. It's clearly different, George, and we've had a couple of years where we've come back here and I think we've been quite lucky the last couple of years. Yes, we've seen a little bit of rain, we've seen some testing conditions, but we've not seen anything too dramatic. Now, this year, there's been some heavy rain in the lead up to the rally. The conditions look very different and the drivers have been talking about it. Tell us about those conditions. Okay, so there has been heavy rain in Kenya and a lot of the roads were washed out. They've been rebuilt and they continue to build them mm. and they look beautifully engineered before the recce. Now, since the recce, and, and the recce lifted a lot of that new road out, and it has rained after that. So now we've potentially got a rather rutted road mm. with potholes filled with water. The rain is coming intermittently, so it, it may come, it may not come, but it's certainly more widespread than the last two years, Colin. No, I saw so, it last night. I drove yeah. in last night, and my goodness me, it absolutely chucked it down yeah. the rain. So if, if we look at it in context, the previous two years, we've mm. had somewhere between 10 and 15 kilometers of one stage wet, and it caused chaos. Total chaos. Total it was chaos. great, wasn't it? It was glorious chaos. It was fantastic, chaos. fantastic. Yes. Proper wet safari <laughs> chaos. Now, this year, we could potentially see 30 or 40% of the stages in that wow. condition. Wow. What's that wow. going to do to this event? It is going to make it a carnival of fun for us. It really is an yeah. absolute carnival of fun. Listen, George has been out to have a look at some of the challenges that lie in the stages, and there are plenty of them. The Malawi stage, 11 kilometers, basically. I think one of the roughest, toughest stages in the rally. It's never actually yielded a retirement. I'm falling over here. Series of steps coming up over about 80, 90 meters, and you think it's nothing. Coming up in the Land Cruiser, low first, we're bouncing around all over the place in these big steps. They've got 30 meters of good acceleration, and then into these steps. There's loose rocks in here. This is glass. But look, step after step, these are 250 millimeter steps, big rocks, hard rocks embedded in the ground, and there's section like this after section like this in this stage, maybe about 10 times. A major feature of this rally over the last two years has been the Fesh Fesh. This is the stage that claimed Cali Rovenpera two years ago and also caused a massive problem for Oliver Solberg last year. So, Fesh Fesh, it's fine volcanic dust. Maybe you can see that. This is only about 50 millimetres deep. The road has been rebuilt with hardcore, uh, basically eliminating this fesh fesh completely from the rally in most parts. But it's a fine volcanic dust like talcum powder when you put your foot in it, and it's so soft and so powdery, no substance to it at all. The car just falls into these big holes. Very treacherous, but not really a feature of this rally. There is maybe one or two corners where it might become a little bit of a feature, but they're generally on flat areas or downhill, so it's not regarded as being a critical issue on this event. Wow, there's no question. Listen, you know, look at all of those potential areas of jeopardy that George has found for us. You throw in the weather and it is going to be mighty interesting, George. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the actual route ahead of us because it's it's one of the longer rallies if not the longest rally of the year it's nothing like the kind of challenge of old where what we did 12 14 1500 kilometers competitive weren't three and a half thousand kilometers. oh wow <laughs> you know we've got 355 kilometers this weekend george a chunky friday a chunky saturday and not a bad sunday with one of the biggest challenges of, of the, the rally call and the little stage that starts off on sunday morning malawa it's the roughest stage of the rally it's only eight kilometers ah. seems very short but my god there are proper rockeries yeah. and steps 
You'd have just seen those in those little clips. Yeah. It's not about pace this weekend. It's about management. It's about strategy. It's about using your head. Intelligent drivers yeah. will be rewarded here this weekend. Let's go on and talk about the drivers and the teams then, George, because I mentioned shakedown there. It was a disaster of a shakedown for Hyundai and Esa Pekka Lappi in particular. Now, Lappi is in a fine vein of form, perhaps the best of his life, but okay, he's never been here before. He's full of confidence, he comes, he needs, he needs the time at shakedown, George. And they had a double failure on the drive shaft, was prop, it? Prop, prop shaft. shaft. Problem, yeah. Wow. So, so what that means is, uh, they weren't new parts that failed, I was told, but they were well within their parts life expectancy. So what they're trying to figure out last night as we left them was, was something happening to cause it to fail, or was it just failing? Batch? Could it be a batch, George, or it, not? Because it, it's, it could, it could it, be. Well, but it's already been used and it didn't break, Colin. But, so, but then, is it within, as you say, the, you know, they, they might have what? I don't know, a thousand kilometres on each. Say, for example, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, are they saying maybe we're not going to get that out of these? Is it something they should be concerned about for the other cars? Absolutely. That that wow. is the, that is the concern. But Thierry had no problem, and obviously Danny had no problem. But we they, don't. They were sorry to interrupt, George. But do we know whether they were running brand new? Prop shafts? No, we don't. Do you know what? This event has not been kind to Hyundai over the past two years. Their best result is fifth for Thierry Neuville. Um, you know, Danny Sord has been here before, but he's, he struggled in the past. Esapeka Lappi here for the first time. They're building a little bit of momentum, George, with that win last time out. They're back in the Manufacturers' yeah. Championship. But right now, the event starts in a few hours. They'll be concerned. They'll be worried about really what they have to do to, to mount a challenge this weekend. Unless they've managed to identify the the, the fault for sure, they will be beyond worried, mm. Colin. I mean, that, that this could be a, an end of game before they've even really started. The team, I think, that are very much in the box seat, Josh, have to be Toyota. You know, they won last year with Opera, they won in the previous edition yep. with, uh, with Seb Ogier. Yep. Um, you know, they've made modifications to their car, and we saw that in Shakedown yesterday. There are extra vents, there are various things they've put in. Uh, they've got the knowledge, the experience, the drivers, and hopefully, the durability in the car. I, I believe they have. We, we spoke briefly with Tom Fowler, the team engineer, and he said that basically they, they, they know they will have potentially issues here in certain conditions, but it's a team approach to that. Yeah. So they've modified what they can on the car. Yeah. They've, it's more cooling, they've isn't mitigated it? what they can yeah. physically by altering the car's dynamics, yeah. but the drivers are also part of the solution. Yeah. So there are certain no-go areas for the driver. When they see something, water or a particular feature, they say, oh, right, we have to do this. Right. Whether, it's, whether they change a setting in the car, like an engine setting or something, that's a possibility. Right. Um, I know that the Hyundai's actually, I think they have an air flap for the, right. to change. Right. Uh, uh, if they're going through fesh fesh or normal, they change from the front, the front air intake to an air intake on the scuttle. Wow. Yeah, I spotted that just yesterday. I was asked not to take photographs of it, so I didn't. But, but I saw it there in plain sight. It's all public, it's all in the public. Now, well yeah. done, George Donaldson. Now, now people know. Katsut is struggling a little bit. He's had quite a few accidents over yeah. the past five or six rallies, George. Um, he's struggling a little bit to up his pace in this rally one car. We know he's got the pace. Yeah. He's got a fantastic record here. Yeah. Second two years ago, third last yeah. year. It would not surprise me at all. It's a big call if Katsuta wins this one. Really, it wouldn't surprise me. Now, you might fall off your seats and, go and say, don't be silly. Katsuta knows he needs to be careful this weekend. He's got the pace, as you say, in those quick stages, yep. George, to set the times. Yep. I have a feeling this might be another one of those glorious resurrections, you know, from, you know, villain on shakedown yeah, to hero yeah. at the end of the day. Well, uh, that would be a fantastic story. I I'm still just a little bit confused as to how he made that mistake on shakedown. Third pass at the shakedown, everything going well, happy with everything. And it, it looked like, it was, we've only seen the, vi the video footage, we've not talked to him himself, so it's speculation on our part. But I just can't understand how he made that mistake. But let's then move on to M Sport because, uh, you know what, um, Oi Tanak, M Sport. I I'm really struggling to understand where they're at just now. We know that M Sport are working really, really hard. The car is, is coming on. They, they basically got to turn around the philosophy of the design of that car in some way with the limitations of homologation to give Tanak a car he feels comfortable in. Good, they're working with it. Tanak's doing an unbelievable job. But then Tanak says at the end of the last rally in Sardinia, well, I'm, I'm actually not driving that well. Yeah. I, I'm not sure where he's at right now, George. I, I think he, he may be just be starting to accept the fact that he, he actually he has to adapt to the car a little bit more and accept it. Change his style very, very slightly. 
and get the best a out compromise. of the car. A compromise. A compromise. A compromise. Right. But that said, I do maintain that the last two years here, Colin, mm. he drove a fabulous, oh. fabulous rally. Yeah. And he was in exactly the right place yeah. both times when he hit trouble. Not driver mistakes. Mm. Not silly well, punctures. The first was one was windscreen wiper. Windscreen wiper, it? Or, or was it the fan? Yeah. The interior yes, fan. Yes, he, fogging he, up. Fogged yes. up. The, his heated windscreen didn't work. He's Honestly, not had luck, has he? He's not had luck, but he was, he was at the time when he re retired each time or hit, hit problems, he was absolutely in strategically the perfect position. Yeah, yeah. So he, he read the event very cleverly and very correctly. So in those terms of the rad drivers that have not won the rally, mm. He is the guy that I think has done a very, very clever job yeah, no, for me. I think me. you're right. I think me. you're right. And we saw that Seb Loeb here last year was very quick yeah, until yeah, he had absolutely. his issues. Uh, the M Sport car is capable of winning yeah. this event. There's no question. Because it's not about ultimate performance, no, is it, George? We've said that many times, and we'll say it many yeah. more this yeah. weekend. I think I think the, the the Puma is ideally positioned to win this rally if it's got the reliability and, oh. and the drivers don't knock the corners off it. Dirtfish Live Center. But what is Dirtfish Live Center? New for 2023, Dirtfish Live Center has been warmly received by rally fans all over the world. Why? For one reason, it brings you right here, right to the heart of the action. Head to dirtfish.com, click on Live Center, and follow the rally second by second. Enjoy exclusive behind the scenes photos, videos, and analysis. What are you waiting for? Dirtfish, Dirtfish Live Center! center. Uh, one, two, three for the event. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm also going to ask cameraman Elliot, so give, your, give yourself a second or two, and we might ask the elusive Tony about his one, two, three as well. Yes, it um, does exist. Least, you can just stay there, Tony. There is, there is a Tony. Uh, George, you're one, two, three. I've given you a second to think about it that, while I've walked. That is awful. I think there'll be a Toyota or a Hyundai or a Puma in first place. In second place. No, 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 no. George, we don't, we don't play these games. We don't. We okay, don't. right. It's drivers' very quickly, names. Very quickly. Um, Seb Ogier. Hmm. Tyler Rovenpera, mm -hmm. Thierry Neuville. Oh, there we go. Right, you remember that one. Uh, Elliot, shout. I'll, I'll relay it. Oh, what was you? What did you say then? You said Ogier. I said, I said Seb, Cali, Thierry. Radio. Yeah. Uh, Tony, shout. Uh, Seb, Cali, Tanak. Seb, Cali, and Tanak for Tony. You'll meet Tony at some point this weekend. You really will. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. Uh, now, my three. I, I am actually going to go. For Tanak victory. I think Tanak's going to win. And I, can I think believe that, yeah. I think Robin Perra will be second and Ogier will be third. I think they may swap positions, George. That's my view on this. I think um, I think Ogier might well be the quicker, the quickest of our Toyota drivers, but I think with the way things are shaping up for the championship, we might see. Although Toyota don't play those games. They don't play those games. But it'll be interesting to see. But anyway, so if you have the idea of your top three, it is three. Put them in the comments below, folks. We'd love to read them. Yeah. Uh, agree, disagree. George, you've got a point. I can there see is, you. There is, there is. There has never been a, a, an event in the championship harder to predict than this. Oh, listen. Genuinely could. I agree. Pierre Luby could, Pierre Pierre Louis Louis could easily win this Keeps his nose clean, George. Yep. He could. And certainly it's a podium is possible. Certainly a podium is possible. Uh, let's not discount a rally two car in the top three this weekend. Not winning it. No, you, Elliot thought I was going to say winning it. No. Uh, Top it, four. Say top four, it, George. Rally if, two car top four, I'm going to say. If it was a full wet event yeah. where the speeds come right down, yeah. a rally two does have a chance. Oh. Uh, but it would have to be full wet, and I don't oh. think we're going to get those conditions oh. here. Uh, listen, as George has quite rightly said, possibly uh, the most difficult rally of the year to predict. What we can guarantee, folks, is it is going to be full of the most visually stunning scenery, the most visually beautiful action in the stages and we will be here to cover it all this weekend so don't forget top three in the comments below folks dirtfish live center if you miss anything through the course of the weekend and it is a long weekend dirtfish.com uh, there's a drop down menu or if you're if you're on your um, if you're on your mobile drop down menu if you're on the laptop go across the top dirtfish live center press the button there uh, and leave comments for us we'd love to hear from you on yes, dirtfish please. live center as well it is folks going to be a stunning stunning week here in Kenya. We can't wait for it to get underway very shortly. We'll see you all out on the stages.